Hey everybody, it's Chainsaw at the Dam reviewing the brand new studio album from Revocation entitled Deathless. Let's jump into this review. I'm feeling a little deja vu right now because back in 2013, a year ago, we had the self-titled album from Revocation. And now a year later, we have Deathless, a brand new studio album. So when I saw this, I thought, oh, that can't be right. They came out with an album last year. Bands don't usually do this. They don't put out a full album and then a year later, another full album. And then I read the information. They signed with Metal Blade Records. The band is moving up in the world. So, either that that was part of the contract where they were going to come out with a brand new album, or they felt inspired because they're moving up in places and Revocation is becoming a bigger, uh, bigger and well-known band. So, whatever the case is, I'm happy with whatever the case is because this album, Deathless, is fantastic. I actually enjoyed this album more than the self-titled. The self-titled, I felt it was a fantastic record, had a lot of great things going for it, and I really enjoyed what that album was and basically what they put into it because it really does define Revocation as it's being the self-titled. But Deathless, I feel like, takes it back to parts of, the, at least parts of the album of Deathless, takes it back to the beginning of Revocation. It feels like that they got inspired by their original material and then really pushed it to another level with where they are now musically and basically growing as band as uh, as a band and band members and musicians and and musicians and all that but i feel like that deathless is kind of inspired by their earlier work and also is looking towards the future of the band i feel like this album is a great combination of those two things now I'm not saying that on this album there are things they've never done before because obviously that's not going to happen yet if it does because they don't want to scare their fans away now by coming out with like an album with half of it being stuff you've never heard from the band before. So they're going to stick in the similarities a little bit in that realm but they're also I think wanting to branch out a little more because you hear that there is some progressiveness in these songs where the riffs are not just mighty thrash riffs and the riffs aren't just technical death metal riffs these riffs have some progressive progressiveness in them and i think that that's pretty good i just hope that they don't lose the roots of what revocation is and i don't think they will but i do see this band at some point with looking at deathless and what's on it and how epic and mighty it is and how i see that the band is is really growing from what, where they were a year ago with the self-titled that i feel like that they are going to progress more because this album i feel like just has more to offer than just thrash metal and technical death metal. There are some progressiveness, and I feel like that they are they're, they're figuring out how to write songs better. It definitely feels that way. Now, I'm not saying their past albums, the songs aren't good at all. I'm saying is I think they are starting to understand a little bit better how to really put together some very amazing songs and really how to make the transitions work at least better, in my opinion. So, I have to give the album that because this album, I think, flows great. It feels great, and it feels like the band, the chemistry is just top-notch on this album. There's a lot of great things going on within this record. I'm going to go through some, some of my favorite tracks. Now, I love all the songs on this album, but these are my favorite tracks on this record for many different reasons. Adept Owned to the Grave. Adept Owned to the Grave, track number one, clocking in at 4 minutes and 52 seconds. This, this track has so much stuff packed within it that literally the song feels like it's longer than it actually is. And I enjoy that because... That's better feeling the sense of that the song is longer because there's so many good things going on. You don't want the song to end rather than the song. You feel like, OK, I can't, what, is it going to end because it's so boring? So I like the fact that the song is packed with a lot of things and it feels longer than it actually is. A great opening track. It really does set you up for the intensity of this band. And it has some melodic stuff to go along with it so that so that you're not going to be you know really slammed with so much stuff. Um, you know, right at the beginning, there are some some pullback moments in a sense. So there's that. It's a very, like I said, a very, very good intro track to this very hectic and intense album. Track number two, Deathless, which is the title track. Now, they actually, I think they released this as the first single. And people, um, some fans had issues with the uh, actual, like, yelling vocals where it, it's it's kind of like singing and yelling. It's not singing like, oh, no, 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 no. It's not like that. It's kind of like, saw your day. Like that, instead of screaming and growling like we're used to hear from Revocation. And some fans had problems with that. For me, for where it is on this album, is it's not as much of that type of vocals compared to the actual growls and screams on this record. I, on this record, I feel like that it's good for where it is, those type of vocals. So I have no issue with that, but the title track, Deathless, is definitely good. Track number four, Madness Opus. This song is intense 
and insane. I love what they did with this track. I feel like that the transitions on the song work very well. I really like the drumming on this track. It really is intense. And I really do enjoy David's vocals. Let me make sure his name is David. I want to get David. I feel like his vocals on this album, on this track, uh, track number for Madness Opus is very, very good. I really like what he's doing there with his vocals, and I really enjoy the guitar solos <laughs> that are on this track. It's very, very intense. Track number five, Scorched Earth Policy. I like this track. I like the track because the title. It's very, very catchy. But I do enjoy how the song is. I do enjoy that this is the song right in the middle of the album. And I feel like that is it is a good song to kind of transition from the first part to the last part of the album. As it does feature a lot of things you're really expecting. Those intense thrash riffs. Those intense uh, technical death metal. And there's some progressiveness throughout this track. So I really enjoy that they're kind of you know blending the two things they're really good at. And kind of blending you know this third thing. The progressiveness a little bit coming in. So I really enjoy how this is the middle track. To kind of transition from the beginning to the ending of the record. Track number 7, The Fix. Now this is a very interesting track because... It does feature some interesting things they're trying to do here. I really enjoy how the riffs are being played on this track. This track, I think, is one of those songs that I think fans are really going to enjoy because it really does show the intensity of this band, but it also shows you know kind of a more pulled back side of the band. But I feel like The Fix is definitely a hard, heavy-hitting song, and it's worth checking out. This one of the few songs, it's one of the higher songs that I definitely want to recommend. United and Hellatry. I'm pretty sure I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right. Another great track. Now, this is the one I wanted to get to. Track number nine, Apex, is an instrumental. And this song is the the song right before the final track. I feel like the Apex is doing a lot of great things here. I like the fact that they did an instrumental. I love the fact that they did an instrumental. They've done them before. Um, but I feel like this track really shows that the band can kind of step outside of the revocation box with the vocals included and kind of just freeform and just write some stuff that you may not hear on a regular revocation track. I like that this song stands out and is different and it doesn't sound like a song that has revocation vocals. That they're writing this song in, in a style that doesn't need vocals and it's and it's a it's a completely different style than what they're doing on this record. So if I have to recommend any song on this album before any of the rest of them, the first one I recommend is Apex because if you enjoy the instrumental on this album and you enjoy what they're doing on this track, which I love so much, you're going to enjoy the rest of the nine tracks with vocals because I feel like the song can kind of, you know, let David kind of rest and let them just kind of write a different style and kind of do a couple of different things to really switch up the song and make it unique and stand out amongst the album. Track number 10, Witch Trials. This song feels like it is another instrumental. There are some vocals on the track, of course, but this song is mainly focused on the mu on the actual music, the actual guitars, bass, and drums, and I like that because this song could obviously be a mighty song with a lot of great vocals and a lot of great lyrical content from David, but it really is focusing mainly on the musical part of the song, and I really enjoy how this song really focuses on the guitar aspect. There's a lot of great riffs. There's a lot of great melodies where the, harmon where the harmonies are just beautiful. The solo, I think... The solos that are kind of closing this song are just to die for. They are so damn good. It's definitely worth checking out. That's my number two track, uh, right below Apex. Definitely Witch Trials, the final track, is definitely worth your time. Now, there is a, a deluxe version bonus track with Sworn to the Black Morbid Angel cover. I did not hear that, but there is that. If you're a fan of Morbid Angel, they did cover Sworn to the Black, which is a part of the deluxe edition. So, quickly go through the actual band members themselves, David and Dan on guitars. David, of course, uh, as I've seen him do before, he is the lead guitarist. Now, I'm not sure if Dan, the other guitarist, is doing any solos, but what I will say about the solos in general are they are beautiful and they are they are done very very well on this on this album you know they can switch from being very intense and aggressive and in your face when the song is like that when the rest of the band is behind that solo doing the same thing but when the band kind of pulls back and is not playing as hard the solos turn from that intensity to that melodic and that peacefulness and i really enjoy that and the fact that witch trials the final track has a beautiful guitar solo to kind of close the song as it fades out i love that they did that because obviously this album could end on a uh, the, the song could end and the entire album could end on this mighty thing but they kind of pull it back and kind of end on a very melodic and peaceful type note 
So I got to give it that. But the guitars sound intense. The 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 rhythm playing, just the sound of the rhythm guitars is perfect. I think for what this band is doing, and I love that the riffs are mighty and they're big and they're in your face and they switch from being very technical and very and more simplistic, but to the point where they're very catchy. So you're not getting like, oh uh, well, well, this riff was like going all over the place with the frets, but this one. It's kind of simple, and they're just playing the same thing. They keep the they keep the more simplistic riffs at least interesting and catchy, to where you're not feeling like okay, this is a completely different section. Like it feels like a completely different song because the riffs sound so different. They kind of know how to make these riffs that are completely different in like speed wise or aspect, but they keep the riffs interesting. So I gotta give them that. So rhythm playing and lead playing and melody playing are just beautiful. I love it. I love what they did on this album. Brett on bass. The bass can be heard throughout this album. I wish that there was a little bit more involvement, especially on Apex, the actual instrumental. Brett actually, actually has some really awesome bass moments. Sounds like a bass solo, so give props to him. That was a really great uh, addition to hear that bass a little bit solo going on in the fact that I can hear his bass and hear him playing along with the rest of the band. It's very intense sometimes, so i got to give him props for keeping up on playing bass, playing on these intense tracks. Phil on drums to kind of close it all out. His drumming on this album is, once again, top-notch. I feel like that his drumming on this album is just fantastic. He is doing a, a, a great job here. Really adding some very unique uh, patterns and really unique things he's trying to throw into these songs because obviously he could just keep up with double bass and just keep playing, you know, different speeds, keeping up with the track, but he throws in different things and really does some cool things on the drum kit that really does switch up these songs and make these songs kind of stand out when these sections are really neat, a, a unique thing going on with the drums. He does it, he delivers, and he delivers a fantastic drum performance. The entire band sounds great. The production, in my personal opinion, sounds great, so there's no issues there. Deathless is is a fantastic revocation album it is worth checking out it's worth checking out apex we're checking out witch trials it's worth checking out the entire record this album needs your attention if you're a fan of thrash metal a fan of technical death metal and you want to hear some progressiveness a little bit you know coming in a little bit from time to time throughout this record or throughout your music you will like this album so check it out revocation deathless it's worth your time anyways guys my rating for this album is definitely gonna have to be a 9 out of 10 uh you know I'm, it may be higher maybe a 9.25 something like that but a 9 out of 10 i think in my personal opinion is a great rating let me know what you think about this album if you've heard it in the comment section below and if you have not go check it out come back let me know what you think of revocation deathless anyways if you like the video like the video if you want to see me or more of my stuff click my name or subscribe to see more thank you guys for watching see ya